Um, I want to welcome everyone watching to the very first um, Facebook Live Town Hall. With uh, Hopefully we'll be doing one of these um, every month. And this month we are focusing on roads because it's a very you know, frustrating situation. Our residents are having a lot of issues with traffic and road closures and different projects going on between the city of Bloomington, the county, and Indiana Department of Transportation, INDOT. And I have Adam Wason here with me. He is the Director of Public Works for the city of Bloomington. And what we're going to do is he's going to sort of talk about the projects that we have going on and address some of the um, things that have come up and different questions that have already been submitted on the Facebook Live event. And then um, after he sort of goes through his um, presentation, then I'm going to go ahead and go through some questions. And I have Javon over here, so you might hear Javon. He's our intern. He's amazing. So he'll be um, helping us with questions as they come in live. All right. So I'm going to turn it over to Adam right now, and he's going to talk about uh, different projects we have going on. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for participating today. Um, we uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your lunch hour to... Uh, be here with us to kind of hear, hear from the city about some of the major projects going on right now. And, uh, you know, like Laura said, I'd, I'd like to just kind of start out with um, an overview of all the projects going on um, and describe what those projects are, where the funding sources are coming from, what entities are in charge of those projects, and then um, talk about some of the detours that are going to be put in place over the summer and um, that are currently in place. And then, uh, you know, like uh, Laura said, we'll go right to your questions. But um, just kind of upfront and to put it out there, you know, we understand and I understand that this is a frustration for folks that are traveling in the community right now. Um, it's the result of many, many different factors, some of which are outside of local control. But, um, you know, we're doing our best to kind of take charge here and um, be sure to lead in efforts to um, mitigate the uh, traffic woes as best as we can, knowing there are going to be some frustrations that we can't control. So um, just kind of starting out, we've got, um, you know, Laura mentioned several different agencies uh, that have projects currently going on. Um, you know, INDOT and I-69 is a major project that's been going on in the community for many, many years. Um, you know, the Second Street uh, Bridge, the Third Street Bridge, um, you know, the Bypass Bridge, uh, we know those are frustrating. Uh, bottlenecks for folks right now, um, but what I want to assure folks of is that we are working and communicating with NDOT the best we can to try to uh, mitigate those efforts, but so starting on the south side of town with the I-69 project, you know, the Fullerton Pike interchange is fully open, has been for some time, uh, and is serving as a good detour for a lot of folks that uh, live on the southwest side. Um, the Tap Road Bridge, that will open up um, here towards the end of May is the latest we've heard from NDOT, so that will be fully open to east-west traffic here starting uh, towards the end of May. Um, the Second Street Bridge there at Bloomfield Road, State Road 45, um, you know, typical Bloomington, a road with many names, but um, the Second Street overpass, uh, the indication we've currently been given from NDOT is that that bridge will be fully restored to uh, full traffic um, sometime in mid-June, mid to late June. Uh, the Third Street Bridge is scheduled to reopen to traffic. Pro it's, it's a couple weeks behind schedule right now, but uh, the latest we've heard from NDOT is probably uh, early to mid-July on the Third Street Bridge. So um, with those um, three bridges and um, really impacting east-west traffic right now, you know, the one thing I, I, I want to stress there is, you know, we do have one of the best working relationships we've had with NDOT in some time, but the 800-pound gorilla is that I-69 is two years behind schedule. A lot of the projects that we've scheduled and the county have scheduled were in anticipation of that project being completed. Um, the other thing to point out with those, over, those overpasses and those interchanges is that the city and the county had previous agreements with the public-private partnership that was uh, originally constructing the project that would have prohibited lane restrictions on any of those bridge, consecutive bridges. So um, the conditions we have right now on second and third are certainly um, those, were not, those would not have been allowed under the previous agreements. When NDOT took the project back over, they knew they needed to accelerate, and the only way to really try to get that project done quickly was, was to have uh, consecutive overpasses with, uh, with restrictions. So um, fr as frustrating it is, as it is, um, what I've observed is that NDOT's moving as quickly as they can on a whole Section 5, and I do want to thank them for their efforts there. Um, 
so that's kind of an update on the I-69 projects and um, what we'll, we're we'll coordinating with the state. Um, some of the projects that are down in the southwest quadrant of the city that are uh, going to have some traffic impacts that are currently having traffic impacts. Um, you've got what is called the Country Club Bridge Number 73. Um, Monroe County government is responsible for bridge uh, repair, maintenance, etc. Um, that bridge there, it's um, on Country Club Drive between Rogers and Walnut Street. Uh, that bridge um, is currently uh, under construction. It's been demolished and is being completely rebuilt. Um, that project just came up in about the last 18 months or so. Um, you know, the county is doing regular inspections on the bridge, uh, on all the bridges throughout the community. Um, and it was roughly about 18 months ago when a analysis of that bridge led to um, to everyone understanding that there had been some accelerated deterioration that was going to require some. Um, pretty emergency type repair, emergency type repairs in the sense that um, if those repairs weren't being completed right now, the tonnage weight limits on that bridge would have gone down significantly and really restricted traffic over that bridge. So uh, the county did a great job working with the state to uh, align some funding to get that bridge repaired. But you know that bridge project uh, did kind of come up on a um, come up in just the last 18 months in terms of that full closure. Um, you know, while we're on topic of county projects, the county also has their Fullerton uh, Pike um, Phase One project going on right now. That's down um, south on Gordon Pike and Aurora Road. Uh, it's called the Fullerton Pike project because eventually uh, that will connect all the way out to Fullerton Pike near I-69 um, and be a major improvement for east-west travel on the southwest side. But uh, right now, it is having travel impacts. Um, you know, there's uh, lane restrictions. Um, in that area and then between Walnut Street Pike and Walnut Street, uh, Aurora Road is going to be closing there for um, for the next several months. Um, so you've got uh, the County Bridge Project, you've got the County Fullerton Pike Project, and then you've got some city projects coming up. And um, one that's being talked about a lot right now is the Taft Road and Rockport Road Project. Um, Want to let people know that's a, that's a NDOT MPO, Metropolitan Planning Organization, um, 80-20 match project just like the Fullerton Pike project is with the county where uh, federal funds uh, sp are pay for 80% of that project and um, local matching funds pay for 20% of that project. Um, it, the Tap and Rockport Road project has been being uh, planned and discussed for over a decade now. Um, originally thought to be a roundabout um, as the best solution there. Um, the, engineer, the initial engineering design the roundabout showed that the karst features in the southeast corner of the intersection there would not allow for a roundabout, so it uh, took a, a little longer to plan that out to be a stoplight. There will be um, side paths added throughout uh, the um, entire project limits there, sidewalk infrastructure, um, and a stoplight added there at Tap and Rockport. Um, that project's originally scheduled to start on June 10th, but we're now uh, we're looking to push that back a couple weeks until the Country Club Bridge uh, is fully open, uh, trying to help alleviate some, uh, some stress points there. And then uh, one final project just to kind of talk about and uh, let folks know is coming is the, um, the City of Bloomington Utilities has a major sewer infrastructure project that's been ongoing for the last several months. The very last piece of that project is a um, over, it's over a 40 inch sewer pipe that will be installed along Walnut Street um, at Grimes Lane going south to Monon. Um, that major project again is part of a seven million dollar sewer upgrade that the City of Bloomington Utilities is undertaking. Um, we have consistent sanitary sewer overflows right there at Walnut and Grimes near the Micro Motors property. Uh, the most recent one was over 440,000 gallons of untreated sewage being released. That's an important project that the utilities has been planning for many years um, and, and uh, will uh, begin um, here in the coming in, in late May, early June. Um, what we're doing um, and working with our partners at the county is we, the county, the city government and county government have agreed to incentivize the construction of the Country Club Bridge project in an effort to limit any overlap of closures there with Country Club Bridge and the Grimes and Walnut project. Um, again, you know, that's just kind of an overview of all the projects we've got going on, but uh, I want folks to realize we understand there are some frustrations right now. We understand these are major projects that 
have all kind of come to a head at the same time. Um, some of it, um, out, uh, some of the reasons for so are outside local control, but um, you know, when I talk about MPO funding and 80-20 uh, matches um, for the Tap and Aqua project and then the Fullerton Pike project, those projects are planned for many years in advance. There, um, the, the funding for those are set aside uh, or are uh, requested over uh, many years. And um, again, it's it those those funds aren't uh, those matching funds. Are, it's a use it or lose it situation right now. If we don't construct these projects, um, you know we're at risk of losing those major federal funds for major infrastructure projects. So. Um, I know it's a lot to try to take in all at once here, but um, <laughs> we've got a lot going on, a lot of projects, and uh, so, um, you know, we'll, we can uh, go to some questions, or what do you think, talk about some detour routes? Yes, um, so I do have some questions that were submitted to the event page. Um, once again, I'm Laura Collins, I'm the communication special, digital communication specialist for the City of Bloomington, I'm here with Adam Lawson, the well, um, the uh, Public Works Director for the City of Bloomington. If you're just tuning in, feel free to um, comment under this live feed with your question and we will try to get to them all. I'm going to start with a question here from Sue Wanzer. Uh, is there any way the TAP Rockport project could work with karst mitigating features or by moving it a bit? The actual location? Well, um, the project that that's currently planned was moved and was changed because of the car's features. Uh, you know, it was originally planned as a roundabout um, after the environmental studies and engineering studies came back. Um, the car's features in the southeast corner really prohibited uh, it from being a roundabout. Um, if, if we wanted to move forward with the roundabout, it was going to need to be moved towards the northwest corner of the project limits and would have required probably six to eight houses to be purchased uh, in order to build it. So. Uh, at that time, it was decided, and this is several years back, that uh, a stoplight and some other improvements made more sense than trying to uh, really um, go continue on with the roundabout project. Thank you. Um, so, Wendy Bethel has submitted some questions via our Facebook event. Um, she does have some really, um, and some other people brought this up too, questions about emergency vehicles and mm -hmm. the worry about getting them through all these constructions and road closures. So can you talk a little bit about how you work with our first responders, yep. police, fire? Yeah, so we do. We work with both uh, city, county, um, uh, police department, sheriff department, um, with the uh, EMS services, the fire service, uh, Bloomington Fire Department, and others. Um, so um, we work very closely to let them know, you know, each of the, the pressure points that are going to be coming up or are currently occurring, they're very familiar and in and, and regular communication with us. But uh, their CAD system <clears throat> identifies these um, these these areas, um, you know, and so their routing is uh, very specific to avoid um, whenever possible the areas where there's no backups. But um, you know, the, with emergency services, the biggest key is for folks to make sure that they. You know, follow the rules of the road, make sure they get over to the side of the road when you see those emergency vehicles and um, just, you know, practice uh, good driving habits. But they do, um, you know, we do know that you know, in, in certain instances there, there could be some delays, but um, overall, um, you know, we're, uh, you know, we do coordinate regularly and, and provide all the information to uh, those emergency services. And what about MCCSC and school buses? <clears throat> Absolutely. Actually, the biggest reason, um, that's a great point. Um, you know, the biggest reason that we're looking to move forward with the CBU project this summer um, has got to exactly to do with MCCSC. Um, when um, this is, you know, the Board of Public Works next Tuesday is going to hear a request, the final request from CBU for that Grimes and Walnut closure, the use of the right-of-way to construct it, and the, the most uh, important, one of the biggest factors being taken into consideration for the scheduling of that project is MCCSC. Uh, we heard from Nathan Oliver, their director of transportation, very early on that if the Grimes and Walnut project went into the MCC school year, which starts on August 8th uh, this year, that um, that those that project alone would um, delay up to uh, 3,200 students per day from arriving at school at the uh, at the time that they need to be there. Um, so, you know, originally we were thinking we'd you know. Um, wait till later in the summer to start that CBU project, but in hearing from MCCSC and Bloomington Transit, um, that the impacts that that would have on their routes and, and their services to the students and to the community, um, we just couldn't, uh, you know, we really wanted to push forward getting uh, the CBU sewer project in 
um, in and out before August 8th. A um, couple things to note there. You know, we've talked about how we've partnered with county government on incentivizing the Country Club Bridge project. Um, the City of Bloomington Utilities has incentivized their project to make sure that um, that they're going as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, trying to do night work there in the Grimes Walnut area. There's a lot of residential on the east side of Walnut there. Um, so, you know, working late into the night and um, really wasn't an option, but they did agree and come to terms with their contractor uh, to work six 10 hour days instead of the traditional five eight hour days. So, uh, that, that sped that project up by about seven days. So, instead of being a seven to eight week project, it's more of a six to seven week project now. Uh, the plan is to go to the Board of Public Works next Tuesday and request that the board approve allowing um, CBU to start as early as May 29th um, and to get that project again done before August 8th. Um, all the while, um, in, you know, working in partnership with county government to incentivize the bridge project so that um, any overlap of those projects is, is as limited as, as possible being done in the summer months when we hopefully will have some reduced traffic, et cetera. So, um, you know, we're doing everything, uh, you know, one thing to stress here is we are doing everything to coordinate and plan um, you know, these projects so that there's as little overlap as possible. Great. I'm really glad to hear that the, the city and the um, county are working together to sort of alleviate these stresses because mm -hmm. I have heard a lot in the um, questions here on our Facebook event that uh, the south side is really a problem and people are really worried about emergency vehicles and worried about how they're even going to get home or to get mm -hmm. to work. So yep. that's really um, positive. And so what is the mayor doing, Mayor Hamilton doing the you know, uh, we're, we're um, you know, we just had a meeting again on, let's say it's, it's, it's Thursday, so um, just um, on Tuesday this week we had all, uh, st uh, you know, all the stakeholders, emergency services, MCCSC, Bloomington Transit, um, Monroe County Public Works and others um, convened for a meeting to, you know, continue hashing out these, um, hashing out these issues and, and, and continuing coordination. Um, you know, one thing I, I do want to take an opportunity here to say, um, you know, it's, it's been said that, you know, who's planning these things or, you know, is there any communication or coordination going on? Mm -hmm. and, and the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, no one's taking this lightly. The, the conversations about these projects have been going on for months and months and months, and the coordination and the communication back and forth between all the parties um, has been going on for many months. So, um, you know, this is somewhat of a perfect storm of projects and, and, and timing of projects and delays on other projects that has led to this situation. It's not that there hasn't been uh, planning and coordination going on. It, it's, it just seems to be somewhat of a perfect storm. And so, uh, but, you know, those conversations are happening regularly. Good. Is there anything that residents can do to help the situation at all? You know, um, you know patience. <laughs> you know, patience is a big part. <laughs> Um, I know. I, I live on the west side in the Third Street Bridge. I can attest to yep. like having to find dig deep for the patience yeah. inside of my heart. <laughs> uh, I can. I can also tell you, I live on the west side of uh, Thirty Seven, right? And uh, you know, our family experiences it on a daily basis as well. Um, but patience and and courtesy are a couple things. You know, we I've seen on a regular basis, almost on a daily basis, where um, you know, folks, the Second Street Bridge is a good example when you're coming uh, from west to east over the bridge. Um, you know, there's plenty of signage in place that says left turn lane only, left turn lane only, but, you know, on a regular basis, you get folks that, that'll follow that left lane all the way to and, and cut into traffic, which just delays everyone and makes for unsafe conditions. So, um, you know, it, it's patience, it's being respectful of other drivers, it's, um, you know, uh, reporting issues when you do see them. Um, you know, some suggestions that have come through are things that we were already considering and some you know, we, we um, have taken into account and made some uh, modifications. Um, if people do have suggestions, mm -hmm. how, how should they present their You know, the, uh, we're getting a lot of them over the Facebook. Um, you know, the Bloomington, Indiana Roads uh, Facebook page is one that I'm... Which is a great group. Which is a great group, yeah. uh, over 10,000 followers, yeah. uh, lots of good information exchange there. Mm -hmm. I try to put out information on that when, when folks have questions and such. Um, but, you know... Uh, some of the things that have been suggested, I just want to kind of go over and talk about and, and let folks know that, you know, um, you know, there's been a lot of um, requests to modify signal timing. I can assure you that the signal timings are being um, uh, consistently monitored and, and updated to try to alleviate um, uh, some of the traffic backups as best as possible. Um, but what needs to be understood about traffic, the timing of those traffic signals is that by changing one signal, 
um, you affect many signals in the network. Um, you know, every north-south signal that would be adjusted then affects the east-west signals that are within proximity. Um, you know, there's been talk about, you know, putting officers um, and traffic control at each of the signals that are experiencing the backups. That, that could offer some uh, positive benefit, but you know, in a lot of instances with the road network we have and the signal network we have, that um, by you know, um, allowing more time for people to get through, say on North and South Rogers, um, you know, you're, you're j by changing a signal timing too much, you're just moving them to the next signal, which is gonna have a backup or the next signal. So um, the, signal, uh, the signal networking is something that we're definitely looking at and trying to improve the best we can, but um, some of the secondary impacts also uh, have to be taken into consideration and, and um, our staff in the engineering department that we work really closely with is, is certainly um, looking at those and trying to be as efficient with the signal timing as possible. Yeah, and we are developing um, a chat bot and also a text alert um, for traffic conditions and uh, traffic issues. And if you want to sign up for those, the number to, to text is 812-558-5987. And I believe if you just text the word traffic, you should be able to sign up for that. And don't, I'm not exactly sure, we're still working on that. So if it doesn't work for you, I will share that information right on our um, Facebook page later after this uh, engagement. There was a specific question about the timing of the third, third and Franklin yeah, over on the west yeah, yeah. side. Can you so, talk a little bit about uh, that? Third and Franklin over there by the movie theater on the west side is something that um, has been coming up. Uh, um, uh, for several months now, um, that control that signal is under the control of NDOT um, and is scheduled to be upgraded. Um, they've they've tried to make some timing adjustments. They've they uh, you know we're in pretty regular communication, hearing back on what improvements they're making there. Um, you, the answer that no one's really going to like here is that it won't really improve much until they finish the entire uh, bridge project there on Third Street. Um, they, they've adjusted the timings and such, but with the congestion and everything else, that it, um, according to our uh, contacts at NDOT, they've made as uh, they've they've adjusted it the best they can at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is another question. I'm going to just get all the West Third questions out of the the box here. Uh, Bonnie Rhodes asks: uh, This sign has been a westbound has been a at westbound West Third for some time. It's clearly not professionally done, but is it legit? And she, here's a picture. picture. Yeah, you know, so I, I was looking at that one and I was trying to get it figured out. Um, you know, there are quite a few temporary signs associated with the um, I-69 project, and I, I know this is one of them. And I think I, from basically trying to figure out where exactly this is located, um, I think the reason the no turn on red is there is because they're trying to move as much of the um, eastbound to northbound, eastbound 3rd Street to northbound uh, 6937 traffic uh, through those uh, left turn lanes as best they can. So I'm guessing that's why that no red turn, turn on red is there. Okay, thank yeah. you. And uh, Kate Arthur asks, for those of us who live in HOA neighborhoods outside of city limits on the south side, is the city or county going to pay for repaving our roads when they are damaged from all the increased traffic as well as pay for speed bumps? and or increase law enforcement patrols to keep our children safe when everyone has to cut through to get anywhere and yeah. most drivers are like maniacs. <laughs> well, we hope we uh, limit the number of maniac drivers yeah. to as few as possible, but that, that's a great question and a good point to be made is that, um, you know, there are official detour routes for each of these projects. Um, for uh, the Gordon Pike, for, for the Fullerton Pike Phase One project, which includes Gordon Pike and Rural Road, um, you know, the official detour for the rural road portion is going to be down to Church Lane and Fairfax on the south and to Winslow on the north. Um, all the while understanding that um, many people are just going to look for the shortest point from A to B, which uh, may put increased traffic in neighborhoods. Um, I can tell you with the Tappan Rockport project, uh, the official detour is going to be Rogers Street to 2nd and then out to I-69 and back down to Tap Road. Mm -hmm. Tap Road will be open at that point. Um, but we also know that, um, again, folks are going to try to go from point A to point B as quickly and as short of distance as possible, which will probably put additional pressure on uh, the Adams Hill neighborhood near Summit Elementary, and we're working very closely with the neighborhood there. Uh, we will be, the city will be installing uh, temporary speed bumps in that neighborhood on countryside. Uh, we will be seeking additional uh, law enforcement personnel to uh, monitor traffic conditions. 
Uh, we'll be putting up the speed boards that say, you know, you're going 35 miles an hour in the 25 mile an hour zone and it'll flash at you. So those are certainly things uh, for the projects within city limits that we will be doing, uh, especially Tap and Rockport and on Countryside Lane there. And then as far as the road maintenance goes, um, you know, uh, repaving, um, you know, repaving roads is something that the city and the county both um, do on a regular basis, plan that out many years in advance, but, um, you know, we, we've got a paving list and a condition indexing list for every single street in the city, and it ranks it from, you know, um, best to worst, and so a lot of those decisions are um, made based on those condition indexes, but if we do see, you know, a road begin to deteriorate more quickly than anticipated due to increased traffic, you know, that can always move up, so, um, but yeah, we, 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 we've got some really great information, and um, it's a bit off subject, but the city um, just uh, uh, is in the process of completing a major project where we use a corporation called Transmap to go in and do condition indexing for all of our pavement uh, citywide. Um, and that's some of the best data and information we've ever had on the overall condition of every single road segment. And that's how we then get to you know make as, um, the most informed decisions as we can on, on paving and where to pave and, and when to pave, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have some graphics. Do you want to go over? Um, yeah. Areas? So um, the the graphics were pretty much the the map of the projects. Um, uh, Javon, I don't know if you've got that one open, but um, you know the, I, I think we're going to tag those on the top of the Facebook feed. So uh, there's one map um, that does show where the project locations are, and then we also have um, the Southwest Quadrant Detour map, which is going to show each of the projects and has a uh, color coordination for where. Uh, those detours are taking place. But just to go over again um, what the, de the official detour routes are um, current, that are currently in place uh, for the Country Club Bridge project, it's going to be Rogers to the south of Country Club down to Gordon Pike and then back north on Walnut Street, uh, knowing that there are some um, increased, um, you know, that there is increased traffic in that area. Um, the one thing that um, should you know that we've had assurances from the county is that the portion of Gordon Pike between Rogers and Walnut will not have lane restrictions in place during the detour of the Country Club Bridge down to that location. So um, we know to the west of Walnut or to the east of Walnut there um, on Roar between Walnut and Walnut Street Pike there will be lane restrictions and closures, but uh, between uh, Rogers and Walnut on Gordon um, uh, there should not be any lane restrictions that would impact that detour route. Uh, again, when TAP and Country Club closes later in June, um, the official detours are going to be Rogers to the north to 2nd Street, uh, back out to I-69, 37, uh, and back south to TAP Road um, as the official detour. Um, and then with the Walnut and Grimes uh, project that will be coming up in, uh, in June and July, uh, the official detour route being uh, up to um, uh, 2nd Street and uh, to the north, um, uh, over to, um, I believe, uh, it's going to be to Washington, um, and then uh, back over to um, uh, South Washington, or South Walnut, south of Hillside. So, <clears throat> you know, major project there that, that um, you know, we'll be moving some traffic. But um, one other note, thing to note with the Walnut and Grimes project that, again, we're going to try to start that um, as late as possible in terms of an overlap with Country Club. Um, but the, the conditions of, so Grimes will be closed on both uh, east and west sides of Walnut for that six to seven week period. And Walnut will be down to one lane in both north and south directions. Uh, the traffic signal there at, at, at Grimes Lane will be deactivated um, so that you know, we can move as many cars through there as possible uh, under the lane, the restricted lane conditions, um, and um, you know, and then we're, we're going to be looking at you know, obviously signal timing both at Hillside and then up at, at first and second to the north, trying to uh, make sure we're mitigating the traffic uh, best we can there. And um, again, you're with Laura Collins. I'm the digital communications specialist for the city. We have Adam Lawson here. He's the director of public works. And I see that we have about 52 people watching. So if there's any questions that you have that we haven't covered or touched upon, please do not hesitate to add them to the comments right now. And I will be sure to post the graphics that we shared to this Facebook Live um, in the comments so that you'll have access to those. 
So, um, do you have anything else that you want to share that we haven't touched on? We talk about potholes and the other sort of <laughs> yeah, you road know, subject. Um, uh, so, just a couple things. You know, so the Walnut Street Bridge north of Bloomington that would connect to I-69 and 37. Uh, that's one we didn't hit on earlier. That is currently under a closed condition for the I-69 construction project. Um, you know, one thing we're doing there, I know the county has a bridge up there over the Bean Blossom Creek that they're making repairs on um, right now. Uh, INDOT's let us know that they're scheduled to reopen that by next Friday, uh, the 19th. So, you know, we had um, a, a large portion of North Walnut Street there by the Visitor Center planned for paving this year. Um, the county realized they had some bridge work to get done, so both the county and the city are up there working right now to um, uh, make the improvements that, that we have planned while I-69 has got the bridge closed. And so, um, again, you know, the city's doing a paving, uh, major paging, paving project right there, and then um, uh, the county is working on their bridge project. So um, those both will be completed before uh, the bridge re reopens there to connect I-69 and 37. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one that's uh, kind of ongoing and, and getting done before. Um, you know, we've, uh, potholes have been a major point of discussion. I can tell you uh, we've got about four crew, at least four crews out on any given day uh, in each of the quadrants of the city, kind of doing a grid pattern um, for just finding potholes and filling and patching. Uh, but then we can also use the public help if, in identifying locations that they're uh, witnessing and identifying potholes. So uh, we have both the city's U report app and then. Um, and then there's Waz, the Waz app. The Waze app. Waze, yeah, W-A-Z-E. If you look that up at the, in the app store, that's a really great real live, real time um, live user mapping submitted yep. live mapping feature. Yep. Yeah. But uh, so you know you can report the potholes with U report. You can also call the, public, the street department at three four nine three four four eight and, and um, uh, tell them specific locations where you're experiencing some, some potholes. But uh, up to date. Uh, in the la uh, from January 1st of um, this year to um, uh, to current, you know, April uh, 12th now, where um, street department staff has filled over 7,000 potholes uh, citywide. Uh, some of the same potholes multiple times with the weather patterns we've had this year. Um, yeah. You know, when it goes from cold to warm to wet to snowy to freezing. Uh, you know, we tend to have a lot of the same potholes open up repeatedly, so uh, the staff's been real busy doing that. Uh, Maybe you could talk about the process, right? Because before the freezing temperatures go away, for, you know, when the spring comes, I've made can't... a request. It's going to be 60 degrees from uh, here on out. Yes, at least. I'm so yeah. happy to hear that, Adam. <laughs> I'm so happy you have that power. Yeah. Um, but no, so but I think what, while freezing temperatures are still here, mm -hmm. you. You uh, use cold patches, is yeah, that right? Yeah, so, uh, and actually right now we've got asphalt plants open, so we're able to use the actual hot asphalt mix, but, um, you know, during the, the, the coldest winter months when we're out filling potholes, um, we do, we use what's called a cold patch. It's, um, uh, it's not your traditional asphalt, it's more of a temporary fix until you can get hot asphalt. Uh, the big thing with the asphalt plants is they, it, in order for them to open and, and be producing asphalt, the temperatures need to be 45 degrees um, at a minimum, uh, preferably above 50, um, to actually get that hot asphalt. So uh, we're in that now. So we're getting uh, the good, the good hot asphalt for the patching and such. Oh, but um, you know, during those coldest winter months, um, and this this year was just a, a perfect example of you know the conditions that can create the worst pothole con um, season that, that we've had in a while. Is um, you know we, we'd have real cold. It would warm up a bit. Um, we'd, we'd, we'd fill potholes and then it, it would cool back off or it would stay warm and then it would rain a bunch <laughs> and they'd, you know, kind of wash out and such. So uh, a lot of credit down to the staff at the street department. They do, um, they do great work and um, like I said, I think they're up to just over 7,000 potholes filled so far this year. 7,000? 7,000, yeah. <sighs> just a few. Yeah. Um, so. Oh, I, I have a question about um, the construction that's going to be happening downtown. Mm -hmm. How is that going to affect roads and traffic conditions are there going to be closures downtown this summer um no you know so we're kind of limiting uh, it, there shouldn't be any major closures downtown there are some private development projects going on that will have some uh, impacts on lane restrictions and such but uh, one thing you will see around the downtown square right now is city street department staff are replacing 
um, the street lights on the east, west, and north sides of the square. Um, so that's going to be somewhere around 30 of the green uh, lamp posts that are going to be taken out and uh, the base is rebuilt for those. So just, uh, you know, please use caution as you're going through there. But um, otherwise, you know, and, and one thing I can assure you with the paving list for this year, we're going to stay out of that. We're going to, um, you know, try to avoid any major projects down there on the southwest side while we have the uh, major construction going on. And then um, after those projects wrap up, try to get back in there and, and hit the uh, locations for paving that are planned after um, afterwards so mm -hmm. that's one, uh, one, one thing that we're definitely planning well we don't have any other questions coming in it seems like if you have a question that you're dying to ask let's do it now add it to the comment section there um, would you have anything to wrap up or is it well there's uh, you know um, there were a few questions that came in the other day that we've got some uh, answers to oh, great. Um, uh, so there was a question about uh, the Gordon Pike, uh, the Fullerton Pike project down there uh, by Gordon Pike and Aurora Road about the left turn lanes. I did reach out to Lisa Ridge, Public Works Director at the county, um, and it was about the elimination of the left turn lanes. Uh, according to Lisa's response is that it's a temporary elimination of the left turn lane for one week due to the water line construction in the intersection. So um, the current conditions have those left hand turns restricted. Um, and then um, the left, she says that the left turn lane will be put back once the water line is completed through the intersection and the Walnut Street turn lanes will also be restored once the water line is complete. And it sounds like that should be done in the next week to 10 days, um, uh, barring any uh, other major uh, weather instances. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we talked about the traffic lights and better sinking, what we're trying to do there. Um, there's one question about the Rockport and Tap, uh, when Rockport and Tap closes, what the official detours are mm -hmm. and how we're going to help try to um, protect the neighborhood there from additional cars. And we talked about the, you know, temporary speed bumps and additional um, police presence and sign boards with the speed, speed sign boards and such. So uh, hopefully that'll uh, reduce impacts in that location. Um, and we had a question come over here yeah. in the comment section. This is from Mandy Yates. Are developers responsible for fixing pavement after construction? Washington is terrible in front of the rise. Yes, actually, that so that um, that's a great question. Um, you know, there is um, there were some uh, significant impacts to the roadway there from the construction of mm -hmm. uh, the urban station project there where the chocolate mousse is located, and uh, we're working closely. Um, the reason that hasn't been repaired yet is. Um, uh, they weren't able to get those repairs done before the asphalt plants closed last year, so uh, they they are on, they are scheduled to begin that work here um, very soon to repair the pavement there, um, pavement markings. Um, I think there's some sidewalk repairs that still need to be made, but absolutely. So um, one of the things we do with projects like that is we keep a bond um, that keeps the developer responsible for those improvements. If they don't do it, we would cash the bond and do it ourselves. So. Uh, those those uh, improvements to Washington Street should be uh, coming up here in the next few weeks. Um, That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, you know, the, a couple of the other questions that I saw that came through, you know, it's, it's a lot about, you know, why, um, and we talked about this to kind of start, but, you know, why are we allowing these projects to overlap? Why are we allowing multiple east-west closures? And, you know, what I'd like to just kind of reiterate around all of that is that it, it's got a lot to do with the funding sources. Um, Several, two of the projects, the, the Fullerton Pike and the um, Tap and Rockport projects are, are federally funded projects through the uh, Metro, Metropolitan Planning Organization. And so, you know, um, our, those are both kind of lose, use it or lose it funding opportunities where uh, federal funds pay for 80% of those projects. Um, you know, so it, it, it's again, it's kind of a convergence of um, many projects at the same time due to different timing aspects and um, different uh, funding sources that um, we just we didn't want to risk losing. So um, saw that come back up again. So it really is a perfect storm of just it's, kind of things that, yeah, yeah. I mean, a mix of things that are kind of in our control that we can sort of help remedy a little bit, yep. and then a mix of things that are just out of our control that is really... In many ways. Yeah. And, you know, I, and I wanted to, you know, just one thing to think about um, with Bloomington, with road construction projects, with... Uh, you know, how have we gotten to this point? And one thing I, I did want to kind of um, bring up and make sure people understand is, you know, Bloomington's a desirable place to live. Um, I think if you look back at census information and everything else since the mid-90s up until 2018, 
you know, we've consistently grown at about a thousand people per year. Um, has our road network kept up with that? Probably not. But um, you know, in order to keep the road network up, major infrastructure projects need to be constructed. Hence, a lot of the projects that are on the books for this year. You know, it's you know, it's got a lot to do with foresight, with planning. You know, 20 years out, to, and and you know, that's why we're doing things like the transportation plan that we're currently um, completing right now. It's a transportation 2040 plan. It will identify these things. It will identify major projects that require major investments and, in the end, major inconveniences. But it, it's got to do with Bloomington being a desirable place to, to you know, live, work, and play, as they like to say. It's got to do with Bloomington being, um, you know, somewhere that also values um, bicycle and pedestrian access, where it values, you know, um, what used to be referred to as alternative transportation being, mm -hmm. you know, um, and and so we'll, you know, um, you know. It, Bloomington is, you know, uh, it used to always be referred to as a, you know, small town with a, with some big city, with some big city amenities. Well, you know, we're growing into that right now. We have major projects that need to be constructed in order to try to uh, lessen the stress or stress on the transportation network. And you know, the the short term inconvenience will hopefully hopefully provide a longer term benefit to the community. So it's going to be a tough summer, I but the payoff is going to be yeah. huge. Yeah, you know, uh, that's that. That's um, that's that's the way I, I choose to look at it. That's the way I hope other folks will look at it. You know, we understand there are going to be inconveniences. We understand the Southwest Quadrant is going to be the bulk of those inconveniences this year. We're doing things to move timing to make accommodations, um, all the while knowing there will be some pain points. Right. Um, and the city does listen. The city <laughs> listens to. It. So if you want to submit your comments or suggestions or whatever, we're always open to yep. taking them. Um, Adam is great. He's always on the. Roads group on Facebook trying to answer questions, and um, the city of Bloomington is very happy to have a public, uh, very lucky to have a public works director. You're yeah. so on top of it. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, you know, was uh, trying to uh, provide responses on that Bloomington Roads website through our Facebook page throughout the evening last night and the morning this morning, and you know, it's a, it's a good conversation. You know, um, I you know. Personal insults aside, um, yeah, right. you know, it's, you could do it, a little less of those. That would yeah. be lovely, but yeah. you know, um, <laughs> also understand people are frustrated and they want answers. And yes. you know, um, I, I try to make myself available on not only that Facebook page with responses and everything else, but uh, we've put our office phone number out there many a times. If folks have questions, specific questions or suggestions, uh, the main public works administration line is eight one two three four nine three four one zero. We're happy to do anything we can to answer questions, to have conversation, to provide people the information they need. Um, you know, I guess just kind of to wrap up and to provide some final thoughts, um, you know, uh, it's going to be a tough, um, if you haven't planned your summer vacation, I would shoot for the middle two weeks of June, especially if you're on the southwest side. Uh, that might be a great opportunity for to, to miss a few weeks of the biggest stress points. Um, but to be courteous, be courteous to other drivers, be courteous as a driver. Uh, be on the lookout um, for folks that might, you know, not be from around here, might not know the traffic patterns, um, and, uh, and, um, and and just do know that, you know, it, I understand it's frustrating, I understand folks have a lot of um, angst about this, but um, these decisions aren't being made in a vacuum, they aren't being made without coordination and conversation and communication with other entities, um, but we've referred to it a few times now as kind of a perfect storm of projects that, that have come on at the same time, and um, we are we're doing everything we can to just lessen the impacts, uh, mitigate the impacts, and you know take charge and 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 get through these projects the best we can. So, appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, a few suggestions to Laura for next time: better food in the green room. Um, there was no. I green. know, and he didn't want green M&Ms. Yeah, yeah. There, there was no green room, <laughs> and there was no makeup artist. Obviously. No makeup. No. But um, you know, uh, <laughs> so. Um, but no, I appreciate everybody's time today. I uh, appreciate everybody's patience, and you know, yes. uh, look forward and, to the next time. I and get we to do this. we appreciate Adam being yeah. the first uh, director to go here on this uh, new Facebook Live Town Hall series that we're initiating today. Um, and you know, it, was, it can be a little like nerve wracking to take some live questions about something that's so um, a hot topic. You know, um, so we really appreciate you being here. I and really appreciate you asking me to be the first one. <laughs> You are very welcome, you know. <laughs>
Um, so the next uh, Facebook Live Town Hall will be in May, and look for further details about that. And if you, you know, follow us on Facebook if you haven't already, and we look forward to more of these in the future. Again, this is Laura Collins, Digital Communications Specialist for the City of Bloomington with Adam Watson, Director of um, Public Works. So, thank you so much. Thank you, guys.